Hello fellow fish nerds and happy second day of my February fish vlogs. Happy Groundhog's Day to all you Americans. It's my favorite useless holiday of the year. I actually like it more than a Columbus Day because at least a groundhog is, well, it's a rodent animal so it's not really known to be the smartest. Whereas Christopher Columbus was supposed to be smart and yet thought he discovered a western trail to India. Fail. And yet we still celebrate him. Anyways. I digress. I can talk about Christopher Columbus's failure all day long. Today is Groundhog's Day. Punxsutawney Phil saw his shadow, didn't see his shadow. We're going to have six more weeks of winter, which as you see behind me possibly, first off you see some of my buckets uh, from Summer Tubbin. Obviously it's not summertime right now. It is wintertime. There is snow on the ground. We had a random freak snowstorm, not snowstorm, snow shower yesterday. Um, the, my students couldn't focus at all. Um, but I guaranteed them uh, that we would have at least uh, two snow days for that uh, because it's the weekend. Uh, but no more because, well, tomorrow, Sunday, it's going to be in the 60s. So bye-bye <laughs> snow, bye-bye snow days. Anyways, Groundhog's Day, favorite useless holiday of the year. So what I want you to do in the comments below is... Uh, is put your favorite Bill Murray Groundhog's Day movie, you know the movie Groundhog's Day with Bill Murray, put your favorite quote from that movie down below. I have a hypothesis, I have a, I have a, I have a suspicion as to which quote is going to win, which one's going to be the most popular. Uh, so put your favorite quote from that movie down below. Hopefully those you that have cable in the US are watching it at least once today. Uh, just in the honor of uh, Groundhog's Day. I don't have cable anymore. I watch YouTube and Netflix and Hulu instead. And uh, so uh, I will probably have to find a way of watching it today. But definitely one of my favorite useless holidays of the year. Anyways, I digress a lot. Today's video I'm really excited about because it is one that um, I've been talking about and thinking about for probably two years. It's a very simple one. I don't know why I haven't done it yet. Well, I do know why because I'm lazy. Um, it is a video on uh, how to set up a, the, the most simple, cheap, and fast 10 gallon aquarium for freshwater fish. Um, I'm outside for uh, certain reasons, but anyways, I'm making this video now because a friend of mine from school, a legend in the county, um, he is setting up a 10 gallon fish tank for his daughter and was asking me questions like, hey, do you know anything about fish? I'm like, yes, I do. Um, so I told him I'd make this video for him and show him how to do it, show him how to set up all the airline, all that kind of stuff and make it super simple for him, as cheap as possible. I sent him the links, which by the way, I posted down below in this video. Post the links to the uh, supplies that are on Amazon that are cheapest for most of the expensive parts. Um, and then some of the other smaller parts, which I'll point them out as well, um, those are actually cheaper in Walmart, PetSmart, Petco, etc. Um, and then I recommended him to go to local fish stores to actually get the fish when the tank is ready for fish. So this video is for my friend from school and all of you viewers, but he was the, finally the straw, straw to break the camel's back to get me off my butt to actually make this video. Um, also one of my sister's friends a year or so ago was needing some help with her fish tank and how to set it up. So I talked her through it, but I was like, you know, I really wish I had a video to share with you. Well, now I do. So here it is, how to set up a 10 gallon freshwater fish tank for as fast, as cheap, and as uh, simple as possible. Hope you enjoy, hope you learn something once again. Groundhog's Day quote down below. It's Mr. Science Geek. I hope my tanks don't leak. If it's information that you seek, be sure to tune in each week. When my videos take a peek. My singing and my jokes really reek. All right, so first question you might be asking is, why am I outside recording this video when there's snow? And by the way, it is the weirdest looking snow I have ever seen. Look at that, it looks like Dippin' Dots ice cream. It's so strange. I have no idea why it formed like this. I'm thinking maybe it like froze in the atmosphere 
and then it melted a little bit and then it froze on the way back down. I don't know, it's crazy. Why am I out here? Why am I here in the snow? It's 30 degrees, I'm making this video. Why? Because this tank that I have, I got from LJ from LJ Aquatics, post a link to her channel uh, down below and at the top right of this screen. Um, she gave me this tank over the, uh, actually early spring. Um, I brought it home, I water tested it, I put lit some water sit in it. The water never sat in it. It has a huge leak somewhere. Um, I need to reseal it. So this tank has been outside. Literally the moment it rains, it drains. It's crazy. But LJ, still thank you for this tank. Thank you for all that you had done for me and the hobby and for the kids. I've gotten all of the fish that, that you uh, gave me. So thank you for that. Um, anyways, um, I hope you're doing all right too. I hope everything is going going as good as it possibly can. I see your updates on Facebook and I hope things get better. Anyway, so it's outside. I didn't feel like bringing it inside. Um, I know it's got some leaves in it. It has the sand that LJ left in it. It has some snow in it. We're gonna pretend that it, that, that is our decorative substrate, okay? So you get that in, I guess you can do that first if you want, if you wanna have some kind of uh, decoration. Uh, I know like my friend for his daughter is going to be making going to be putting in the rainbow, what I call the rainbow unicorn vomit gravel. Um, I hate that stuff. I just prefer um, as, as natural looking of small, uh, smooth uh, gravel as possible. Natural looking. Uh, these leaves, some of them are sweet gums, which are not good to have in the tank. Some of these are oak leaves, um, which are actually good for tannins for, and good things for biofilm for shrimp and for uh, Bristlenos, Plecos, etc. Uh, they, they will like that as well. And it softens the water for a pistos as well. Anyways, I digress once again. So we have a tank. It's set up in a secure location, hopefully wherever you can put it in your house. It's on a pen table for me for filming purposes. Um, so here we go. So the first thing, um, one of the fastest ways to get your tank going, and you see this is a, this is a used uh, sponge filter. Um, this is actually out of my uh, shrimp tank in my bedroom um, and uh, what I highly recommend is that you find a fish nerd friend. If you're local to me, uh, contact me. Um, you can message me on my Facebook page, a link to that down below if you're local to me. Um, and I will find that, that fish nerd friend that will give you a cycled uh, sponge filter which they're, they're not gonna be the most beautiful clean things, but that way it already has the beneficial bacteria on it. Hopefully they take off the hair algae like what mine has here, but anyways. And uh, that way it'll get you in your cycle going going faster. I'm actually not gonna put this in first. I'm gonna put this off to the side for right now and I'll explain why later, but that is the, that's the biggest time-saving tip that I can, can give you. So, Start off with the air pump. With this air pump, I have no idea what brand it is. I don't recommend it because I don't know how it works. I've never tried it, but it is, it's an air pump, okay? It has an outlet for you to put the, the air hose on, has the plug for you to plug it in. So let's say we have that ready to be plugged in. Uh, so from, and I'll put a link down below to all the stuff on here, their Amazon associate links. I get 4% of whatever you buy on anything on Amazon of the, whether it's these products or anything else, and it doesn't cost you anything extra. And it honestly helps me to support my channel and my classroom as well. So please, I would really appreciate, appreciate and thank you in advance. So air pump from the air pump, you get some airline tubing, which by the way, a lot of this random stuff I had laying around because, uh, a former coworker mine had a had a neighbor I think that got rid of um, got rid of their fish tank stuff so um, she gave me a 30 gallon and a five gallon and then a box of stuff that was very so it was very vintage uh, vintage 90s um, aquarium equipment and uh, this this was so this pump was one of those things so this pump then you just pl put on the airline tubing uh, put that off the side then that goes to um, your family let me cut this tubing with my knife. Or scissors work too, but I have a knife on me right now. Cutting it away from yourself. Uh, airline tubing goes up into the check valve, which I'll take. It's not. A goes up into this 
one way, you just follow the directions. This is super important. It prevents backflow of water in case the power goes out or for when the power goes out. Get one of these. They're, one of them is less than a dollar. Two of them is less than two dollars usually at PetSmart. And that's where I'd recommend to get those, to get these is from PetSmart. It almost, unless you get it in like some kind of deal or package deal on Amazon, I would advise against getting it on Amazon. So you simply put the tube from the, coming from the uh, air pump to the, uh, one-way valve uh, and you want to put it about where wherever water level is going to go about that because that's the furthest that water will will backflow into from there you just have a little short section as you see I have here into a uh, I think this is actually called the check valve this is basically a, a, an air manifold is what it is and where you can dial it this is just the simple two-way uh, air uh, valve and uh, you actually don't even need two of them. I have, there is a more simple and cheap version, but this one's a lot easier to find. Find these in PetSmart, Petco, Walmart. The, the two one is somewhere around, the two way one is probably somewhere around two or three dollars, uh, super cheap. Um, it lasts, I've never had one break really. So plug that in, the, uh, which it's not a perfect fit because this is the, oh, that's not a, that's not a good thing. That's an old, old airline tubing. Here, I'll cut a smaller piece here. Let's cut a smaller piece for this. And I'm not as cool as Michael, Michael's fish room, because I don't do bloopers. I just usually do it one take. That's an old airline. That's old and dry rotted, basically. So from the... Um, which Michael's fish room bloopers are probably the most famous parts of his videos so I think they're really awesome and funny anyways um, so from the one-way valve you just follow the directions in air comes in air goes out to the I think it's called a check valve and then that just hangs on the side of your tank now a more simple version what you can do is these are super cheap these can basically do the same thing if you're only going to ever have just the one tank which let's be real once you buy one tank and let's say you get guppies you're gonna eventually get more um, or let's say you uh, just keep the one tank but then you want to uh, have an air stone going for a second uh, sponge filter for a friend just in case great there you go that's what a two-way thing that the other one can go for that the other one can go to be used to raise brine shrimp but that's advanced stuff we'll get to that later in later videos so this is a, a, another option once again, if you're local to me, I have a bag full of these. I don't know what to do with them. If you're local to me, just let me know. We'll meet at my local fish club. We'll meet at my local PetSmart, Petco, local fish store, whatever. I'll give you one of these. Um, if you're local to me, just find me on my Facebook page and message me on there. Um, I really don't know what to do with them because I don't have just one tank, obviously. So going from the two-way uh, valve, um, you go into Actually, this one's kind of already done. So this is what I recommend that you do. Um, get my knife back out to cut the uh, cut the airline tubing to length. You have that ready. Um, so I'm gonna put an air stone in there first. Um, why? Well, I'll explain why. Let me just do that first, and then I will. Actually, that's probably a pretty good enough length right there. So cut it to length. None of these measurements, nothing is exactly, just as long as it feels about right, it's good. So I'll put it on the, so I'll put it on this one right here. Put it on there, put it over in there, take a airline tubing little suction cup thing if you have them. If you don't, it's fine, the, the stone will sink and you put it down there so it gets good airflow going to the bottom, which this one's old and dry rotted and it doesn't really stick on there very well, but that's it. Can you still see it kind of, I think it's right here. Don't need to move the camera. No, I think it's good enough. So anyways, you put the air stone in there and uh, like put it about a few inches up and I'll, I'll show you why. Because the other thing you should go ahead and put in is a heater. Unless you plan on raising white cloud minnows or goldfish, you're going to need a heater. And for a 10 gallon fish tank, all you need is a 50 watt heater. I don't even 
This is a brand, this is, I don't even know how old this is, uh, but it is a 50 watt heater. I like the ones with the temperature setting on there. Those are usually pretty accurate with the light that shows you that it's on. Those are the only two things I'll look for. I'll put a link down below to the heater I get on Amazon. It's way cheaper than they have it in Petco and PetSmart. It's like a third of the price sometimes. Anyways, they come with suction cups, two or three of them sometimes, and you suction cup them. I like to get the submersible ones so that I can, you can put them down. I put them in the tank horizontal underneath of the uh, sponge filter and then just hanging so then you'll have it like this going off the side and it's important you don't let it touch the substrate or the um, the sponge filter. so it hangs right in the middle so we're gonna pretend it's hanging in the middle I'm gonna let it hang right there and so so then um, turn it on you have a, a thermometer uh, Best temperature somewhere for most fish is somewhere between 75 and 80 is good. A uh, few fish, uh, none that you really keep in a 10 gallon other than a German Blue Rams. German Blue Rams like it on 82, but everything else, 78, 76 is perfect. That's Fahrenheit, of course. Um, anyways, um, so you have your heater on there, off the substrate, not touching the sponge filter. Uh, or the air stone so that way overheating things don't happen the reason I put it down low and horizontal is so it more evenly distributes the heat and also so that you have you can wait a longer time to be lazy in case the water evaporates you go on a week vacation the water evaporates it gets the water level drops you don't have to worry about your heater being exposed when your heater is exposed to the air and it's turned on and it's and I feel like it has to heat the water and it's exposed to the air, it's gonna bust, it's gonna break, it's gonna cause problems, it's gonna cost you more more money. Get a submersible one, keep it well below the surface, or what the lowest water level would ever be, and keep it there. I put mine, I set it, I forget it, I check the temperature every once in a while, make sure it's still working, life is good. Okay, um, so then the other, so then why did I put an air stone in instead of a sponge filter? Well, because at this time, you're going to plug in the air, the air pump, plug in the heater. Well, not this time. You fill it up with water first. We're going to pretend it's filled up with water. It can't fill up, fill up with water. It leaks. It drains as soon as it rains. So we can't do this. So this, this tank, your tank is now filled up with water. Most you're going to use tap water. Most you're going to use water from the county. Water from the county has chlorine, possibly chloramines in it, which can kill your fish and will kill the bacteria on your pre-cycled sponge and possibly pre-cycled uh, substrate if you get some from a, a friend. So do not put the sponge filter in yet. Do not put, well, the substrate just that has to be there. It's going to have to suck it up and possibly kill some bacteria. Um, so the tank's filled up, you plug in the heater, you plugged in the air pump, and you run the air, the air stone's running, it, it has some, it's moving the water, it's helping to gas out the chlorine. Now there's two ways of doing this. One is you wait 24 to 48 hours for the chlorine to gas out, it'll evaporate out. Chloramine will not gas out. You cannot wait for it to, to gas, it, it stays in the water unless you interact with it by chemical means. There's two possible chemical means. Uh, well, there's a few. Uh, the most common is, is Prime, which is a liquid uh, dosing, uh, which they have the directions in the bottle, things like one milliliter per uh, 10 gallons, which is a very small amount. Um, one 250 milliliter bottle, I think it is, will treat 5,000 gallons, I forget how many gallons of water, so it'll last you a while. Um, put that in and it will basically almost instantly get rid of the chlorine and chloramine in the water and help the fish have a good stress coat on them. The option I am starting to use now is Seachem uh, Safe, which is a much larger, uh, it, it is more concentrated, it's the powder version, and it can treat up to 60,000 gallons, so it's, uh, it's more bang for my buck. So that's what I'm going to go with. Uh, because I have way more tanks and do way more water changes, but the average person prime even the the water safe I I, I have used that from Walmart. I feel safe in, in using that um, They probably have a pet smart too and Petco um, as well put links down below if I can find it on Amazon No, way, just put that in the water. It'll be, almost be instantly ready for the sponge filter I would still give it a few minutes a few hours just to be safe once you've waited the 24 to 40 hours or treated it with with safe prime or aqua safe or whatever whatever dechlorinating d 
dechlorinating uh, ammonia dropping uh, chemical agent you use. Once that's done, then you can put the sponge filter in. If you live in an area with, with well water, or you're using rainwater like what I do in the summertime with my summer tubs, it's instantly ready for the sponge filter and it's, it's not gonna kill the bacteria because there's nothing, there's no coin in it that will kill it. Um, actually, it will have some ammonia already in it and chloramine and not chlorine, ammonia and nitrites possibly and possibly nitrates from uh, bird droppings on my roof that I get from my rain barrel. But anyway, that's another topic. So then, once the water is safe, once it is free of chlorine and chloramine, which you can test for that, but like I said, using those chemical agents or waiting 24 to 48 hours makes it so that chlorine is out of the water. Then you can finally add your pre-cycled sponge filter and you're basically ready to go. Now at this point, this is really all that you need. Um, that is this all that you need to get going for a simple fresh water uh, setup. Um, it's not sticking obviously. This is all you need. Now later on down the road, you can add some things like a, a light, which this is, I don't even know where this light is. Uh, I'll post a link to the light that I use on my daughter's tank. She loves it. You can change the colors with a remote and turn it on, turn it off, put on hold a light show. Uh, and it's, it's a LED light, so it's energy efficient. But so then you can get a light. You can't even see it in frame. There's there's light right there. Um, I actually just found it this morning. I put it on a guppy thing that I have just to look, so I can see the fish. Um, other thing you can add later on, obviously, is a lid, which would help to reduce the the um, rate at which the water evaporates. It'll also reduce the chances of fish jumping out. In fact, they can jump out with a lid on as long as the lid's closed. Um, and also, if you have a cat, you need a lid instantly. Like, you need a lid right now. If you have a cat, cats are famous for swatting at fish and fish tanks. And I've seen a bunch of pictures um, of people on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram, links down below, by the way. Uh, people on Instagram that had their cats on top of their fish tanks. Thankfully, there was a lid on it, and so their fish are safe. So, uh, if you have a cat, get a lid as soon as you get everything else. Don't put fish in it, don't put water in it until you have a lid in it if you have a cat. Um, most of my tanks actually don't have lids, but uh, I do eventually plan on building some lids out of a thing that's called polycarbonate, but that's a separate and more advanced uh, video. But th that's really all you need. So 10 gallon tank, get these from Petco with a dollar per gallon sale. You know, most people have airplanes. I have crows that are flying over and ca calling at me. Anyways, 10 gallon fish tank, a dollar per gallon sale at Petco. Uh, this, it would be $10. I got this uh, for free from a friend, LJ, LJ Aquatics, links down below to, to her channel. Hope you're feeling better, LJ. Um, Pre-cycled sponge filter is the best way to go from a friend. And what I do is I will give a friend um, the pre-cycled sponge filter. And then I ask them, hey, I'll send you a link to this, to a new sponge filter. Will you please buy it and then bring it to me whenever you get it? And that way I can keep the cycle going of whenever people need a new sponge filter. So that, that way I don't have to continuously buy new sponge filters and they're still buying them, but they're getting the benefit of not having to wait six to eight weeks. So sponge filter, 50 watt heater, uh, gang, a gang valve, two way, two way air manifold, apparently a light that falls off. Um, airline tubing, eight feet is all you need. Eight feet is more than what you need. Uh, one way valve, air pump, that's it. Get those things, you're definitely said This is way long for a February fish vlog video, but, it was, it was, it was, this video was a long time coming. Please let me know in the comments below if you have any questions, you want any help. Uh, you can message me on Facebook, on my Facebook group, uh, Mr. Science Geek, obviously. Ask me any questions you have on there. If you're local, uh, we can meet up and give you a pre-cycled sponge filter or one of these, one of these uh, little valves right here, if that's what you need. Uh, just let me know. Um, and uh, hope you enjoyed it, fun and informative. Um, stay tuned for uh, uh, tomorrow's video and the, uh, my upcoming February fish vlog videos. Um, so stay tuned, stay fishy people.